So this is what he said. And the Prophet knew, alayhi salam, the Prophet Noah, he also warned his people about the jal. But I, this is Nabi Muhammad, alayhi salatu salam, speaking. I am going to tell you something about the jal which no one has said before me. So Allah saved the best for the last. Or oh, perhaps he saved that which was most crucially important of all. He saved it for the last prophet. What is it? I'm going to tell you something no one ever said before me. He said, the jar sees with one eye. He's blind in the right eye. It looks like a bulging grip. But your Lord, Allah, is not one-eyed. Between his eyes on his forehead is written the word disbeliever, kafir. And every mu'min, meaning someone who has faith, and we Muslims, we don't have a monopoly on faith, okay? There's faith outside of our community as well. And every mu'min, whoever has faith, would be able to read the word Dajjal. Whether he is kertib, that is literate, or ghayru kertib, that is illiterate. Whether he can read and write or whether he cannot read and write, he still be able to read the word kafir. Here is our introduction to epistemology and to those first two chapters of Iqbal's book. When you are confronted with this data, this information, you have to decide, is this an ayah muhkama or is it an ayah mutashabiha? Is it like the barefooted shepherds and the tall, tall buildings? Or is it like the slave woman giving birth to her mistress needs interpretation? And the answer is, if you consider this to be plain and clear, then when Dajjal appears in Jerusalem, I may not live to see it, but you may live to see it. And he declares that I am the Messiah. And you look on his face and you see that he has two eyes. He's seeing with two eyes. Guess what you do? Shall I tell you? <laughs> you say, no, no, no. He can't be Dajjal because he's seeing with two eyes. And the prophet said, Dajjal sees with one eye. That is the problem we have with your bogus methodology. Yes, you are schoolboys. You're schoolboys with this methodology of yours. Even young people now listening to me can understand that this is not this is not Ayah Mukhkama. This is Ayah Mutashabiha. That when the Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, that the Dajjal sees with the left eye, the left eye symbolizes external sight. Did you hear that? And when he said that he is blind in the right eye, the right eye symbolizes, the blind, the right eye symbolizes that he is internally blind. And all those who followed the Jal would also be internally blind. We're seeing a lot of people following the Jal in this lockdown. I don't want to get them embarrassed and I don't want to pick a fight with them. But my listening audience, they would be able to see the insight and know who are those who are following that. It's so funny. Who are following the journey in this lockdown. Okay? Let's not pursue the subject any further. And so the great danger that comes from the Jal is epistemological. 
that he not only is internally blind, but he seeks to reduce all of mankind to internal blindness. And that road is called today the road of secularism, the secular state, the secularization of knowledge. Yeah? You go to university and never, ever, ever in the university are you taught, except in the department of religion, <laughs> about angels, about the last day, about Allah. No, no, no. Take this out of the curriculum. You are studying knowledge here, and that does not qualify as knowledge. That is secular education. And so we have legions of people now over these last 100 years who are the products of a secular educational system and who are now just like Dajjal. They are internally blind. That is the danger. That is the danger. And if you want to study Islamic eschatology, you cannot do it unless and until you see with two eyes. Two eyes. Hmm? Now on his forehead is written the word kafir indicating that he is the leader who leads people to kufr, to, be, to destroy your faith. That's his mission, because it's written on his forehead. It's not that you have to get turn on the lights, let's see his forehead. Oh, no, no, I'm not seeing anything written on his forehead. He cannot be the judge. <laughs> That's what those people with the... With the <laughs> the wrong, the bogus methodology when he stands up in Jerusalem. They say, no, he can't be the judge. Why? The man is seeing with two eyes. He can't be the judge. Why? Look, nothing written on his forehead. Nothing on his forehead. This is what we have as scholarship today. If you are belonging to that Jamaat and you listen to me, I hope you'll wake up. I hope you'll wake up. That the word cafe written on the forehead is not to be understood literally. The word cafe written on the forehead is that he is going to lead you to kufr. There is kufr today. Kufr means disbelief, the destruction of belief. There is kufr today in the political system. There's kufr today in the economic system, in the market, in the monetary system. There's kufr today in the educational system. There's kufr today in the feminist revolution. Kufr is all around us today. And today, from the time you follow the judge, you're following him to the road of kufr, and that's going to take you into the hellfire. And now finally, before we end, how is it that the mu'min who has faith and faith resides in the heart, and you can't faith in the supermarket. No. He will be able to read Kafir, whether he is literate or illiterate. How come? So we send uh, Abu Jahal, the Kafir, we send him to the eye specialist. Check out his eyes. How come he cannot read? Kafir. How come? Uh, how, the word Kafir is written on the forehead, but he cannot read it. And uh, anyone who has faith can read it. So we send him to the eye specialist. And the report comes back from the eye specialist. Oh, nothing, nothing wrong with him. He got perfect vision. He got 20 20 vision. So then the question arises. Why is it that he cannot read and he can read? Did you hear the question? Why is it that he cannot read but he can read? And to answer that question, we have to ask the question that you already heard before. Do we have any other eyes besides these eyes? He says no, because he, he studied at Oxford and Cambridge and just so and Harvard and Yale. He said, no, 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 no. These are the only eyes we have. But this one says yes. This one says yes. Because the Quran says yes. Allah says in Surah Al-Hajj, Afalam yasiru fil-ab 
we did not travel to the earth. Perchance that by traveling, the dead heart might come alive. And when the dead heart comes alive, to be able to use that heart to pursue knowledge, to acquire knowledge, is not just the brain, the rational faculty, the heart is also there. But with the heart you will be able to understand what other eyes could not be understood. And now you will be able to hear what other eyes could not be heard. For in the heart, no, 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 no. It's not these eyes which are blind, says Allah. What is blind is the heart which is inside the chest. And Allah gives another warning, and with this we end for today. He says, I can't remember now which surah, but if you find it, you can put it for me in the comment section of the YouTube channel. He says, Man can fi hazi a'ma. Whosoever is blind over here in this world, in this life, for who will feel akhirati ama? You'll be blind in the next world as well. For a dullness of you, and even more misguided. May Allah protect us, you and I. May Allah protect us from that fate of being blind in this life and blind in the next. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.